Hello everyone. You know I love to play with color. Today we're going to experiment and learn how to use watercolor crayons. There's watercolor pencils, there's watercolors. I've made watercolors out of markers. Today we're going to learn exactly how the watercolor crayon works. That is a mouthful. We're going to love doing it and I will see you there. We love the color and colored crayons are wonderful, but when those colored crayons can be turned into a watercolor, these are watercolor crayons. This is the white. They come from different companies. They are amazing. They will take this kind of not so great looking peacock and turn it into something beautiful. This was my original drawing and obviously I got some paint on it or some drip some water on it. So I went over it and made a copy. And I know from my colored piece that you could see the pencil through. So this time I decided to use a light blue pencil. If you see, you can see the pencil, but it will disappear because the peacock colors. Now when you're coloring on these, it's very different from, it's almost similar to crayons, but you wanna put a ton of pigment on. Let me show you. I'm just going to do some of this up here for you. Look at that. Looks just like a crayon, doesn't it? Thick, and this is actually watercolor paper, so it has a bit of a texture and it will grab it. I'll use a yellow. And just because a peacock is a certain color, doesn't mean that you have to make the peacock that color. You can change it up any way you like it. But this is a turquoise. In fact, Miss Linda doesn't have, I'm gonna use the backside of this paper to check my colors. Look at that. It looks so pale and then it's so bright and wait till water hits it. It's going to change it completely. And I'll remind you when you're using black on this, to see this is navy blue, I would have thought it was black. Um, maybe I should read it, doesn't say. Purple, this is why we check our colors. And at long last black, we're gonna do the center of this black, leave a little bit of space. I think I'll throw some red in there. Looks a little pinkish, but once water hits it, it's gonna change it completely. Remember, a lot of pigment, which means a lot of color, a lot of the crayons. Put a yellow through here. But then again, they have this sort of goldish color in their feathers. So this is how you color it. You just color your colors in there check them on a piece of paper. I'm actually going to throw a little purple in there. Be inventive. Be, I don't know, a little wild if you want to call it that. Don't just go for something normal. Where was that? There's a regular blue. This needs something around it. So I'm going to put a blue. Now, this is how you color it. You do your drawing. You put, you should be able to feel it when you touch it. It almost feels like a crayon. It feels waxy, but it's not. Now, I have finished my peacock, but I have not put water on it except for a few spots to check it out. You need water. You need to have this completely done. I have several brushes because you'll need delicate brushes in through here. Let me show you. Let's use this one. You swish in the water and then you knock off the extra. So when you're doing it in here, just like watercolors, you put it down and let's see what it does itself. Dip again. Another project that sometimes it's best, I have my paper towel to get any excess off. There's a little bit of red under here, so I wanna just gently get the water in there. Too much water will make it, the colors actually swim away. And rubbing back and forth is not going to help, it's going to dull it. Let's go to the neck here. The black will show up very strong. Now, I did the delicate areas except for the nostril. Let's get that nostril. You're just sort of petting it on, so to speak. You're just putting it on there so that it can do its own thing. Similar to when we work with the markers in water, you have to let them do their own thing for a little bit. You have to have a little patience. I am going in a circle over here because it is circular. I don't want to lose this white, so I'm putting no water there. Let's see if I can do this eye. 
very little water, but it will brighten the black up and it will give it more of an eye. Now, when we're doing the bigger parts, you can use a bigger brush. Let's go big. I'm gonna actually push this on the bottom. Believe it or not, paintbrushes get air bubbles in them sometimes. So let's move this here and let's stroke. Stroke, stroke, stroke. You can see when the colors brighten and they will get on your brush some of the colors. Watch when I wipe it off. You get a little bit of the green there. You'll know when to go over it. This is, you do all the work first, you get all the colors on there, and then you have the joy of just putting the water on it. See how I'm changing the actual movement of the feather? I keep wanting to call it a leaf. Sometimes a word gets stuck in Miss Linda's head, and then I'm just gonna do this. But see how it all starts to blend together? It's watercolor magic. Watercolors are pretty magical. Let's go up here again. If you don't go over it too many times, you will not lose the white. If you go over it and over it and over it, I think I have a little example right here. If you go over it too many times, it completely disappears. All those colors are gone. Watch what happens when you just give it that little bit of, I don't know, I guess it's kind of a push, a little bit of a, like a like a, somebody on a swing when you wanna give them a push. You don't wanna push them too hard. And let it move itself. You can always put more water over it. Up here, I need more water. If you keep rubbing it, what color does it turn? Brown. All right, I will do the center this is my favorite. I put a lot of effort into getting the movement of the feathers and the direction so that you can see that this is its chest. There you go. Not too much because I have a lot of black in there. I don't want to lose it. See what I mean how it'll pick up the color? So you clean your brush off, get the excess. Let's do the crown. Kind of a simple crown. I'm going to go over the entire thing now that we have all of the delicate parts done. And you will see from a photo of it what it does. All right, these big ones under here. It's kind of like silent. This is probably the quietest Miss Linda's ever been. Around, let the water do the work. You can always add more water, but once it's on, you can't take it off. All right, this one was the nicest one as far as I'm concerned. There you go. Now I can see I need to go back over this one, and I can because I did not overdo it. Be patient. Let your watercolor crayons move themselves, and if they need a little coaxing, if they need a little more effort on your part, go back. But don't just put it on at once because you'll have brown. And we don't want a completely brown peacock when we're doing something this beautiful and that took us this much time. All right, and I better stop because Miss Linda will keep adding water. Get your crayons, do your drawing first, heavy, heavy crayons, and then light water first, and then let the water do it. All right, one thing to remember, let the water do its thing before you put more water on it. It takes a little patience, but you're gonna be really happy that you did. You can always add more, but once it's on, you can't take it off. My last advice, enjoy yourself, make something beautiful. <laughs>